The Nature of Sin Today, sin, its symptoms, and its effect is badly hurting our world. And the reason it is able to do this to a great extent is because we don't know that sin has a definite nature. It is important that we know and understand the nature to this evil force because knowing your enemy is the first step to actually conquering that adversary. The nature of something is the inherent feature, character, or qualities of something. By exploring the nature of sin, we shall realize how to confront it and solve the problems that it is causing in our world today. The Sinister Nature of Sin Number 1. Sin gets you easily into its web of friendships. The spirit that makes people sin is responsible for the spread of sin from one person to another, like an airborne virus. This means when we associate closely with people that have made sin a natural lifestyle, there is a high likelihood that we will also adopt this lifestyle easily, especially if we are not standing strong in Jesus like a solid rock. Bad association will always wreck good character. It is crucial that we become aware of sin's nature to draw in those that are closely associated with someone that accommodates it. The company that we keep goes a long way to define the reality of our own lives. This is because we value their outlook, their perspectives, and their priorities. It is quite common to see instances where a person that sees lying and fraud as a normal way of life successfully convinces a friend to pick up these same wrong habits. Before long, this lying spirit enters into the same person that hated lying previously. Why? Ezekiel 2, 2 AMP says, Then as he spoke to me, the spirit entered me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. The spirit entered me as he spoke to me. The same way God's spirit comes into us as we sit at his feet to receive his word is the same way the devil's spirit finds its way into our hearts. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Be sober-minded. Be sensible. Wake up from your spiritual stupor as you ought, and stop sinning. For some of you have no knowledge of God. You are disgracefully ignorant of Him and ignore His truths. I say this to your shame. We must be careful and mindful of our associations, or else we will be caught in sin's web. Proverbs 13, 19. Desire realized is sweet to the soul, but it is detestable to fools to turn away from evil, which they have planned. He who walks as a companion with wise men will be wise, but the companions of conceited, dull-witted fools are fools themselves and will experience harm. Adversity pursues sinners, but the consistently upright will be rewarded with prosperity. The Bible didn't mince words in Psalm 1, 11 through 6 AMP when the following instructions were issued. Blessed, unfortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers, ridiculers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law, his precepts and teachings, he habitually meditates day and night. And he will be like a tree firmly planted and fed by streams of water which yields its fruit in its season. Its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers and comes to maturity. The wicked, those who live in disobedience to God's law, are not so, but they are like the chaff, worthless and without substance, which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand unpunished in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows and fully approves the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. Number 2. Sin is demonic. Sin isn't just a habit that can be broken with simple therapy steps or by discipline. Rather, we must be aware that it is driven by demons. Therefore, only God-inspired solutions can bring liberty from its grips. Sin always has separation from God as its goal. Its end game is destruction and regrets. It always goes against everything that God stands for. Judas Iscariot's story is a classic example of the demonic nature of sin. He couldn't justify his betrayal, but he couldn't control his action till he sold Jesus out to the chief priests. Then Satan entered Judas, the one called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve disciples. And he went away and discussed with the chief priests and officers how he might betray him and hand him over to them. They were delighted and agreed with him to give him money. So he consented and began looking for a good opportunity to betray Jesus to them 
at a time when he was separated from the crowd, because the people might riot or stop them from seizing him. Luke 22, 3. Have you ever felt hatred for someone who barely offended you, or felt angry at someone else's progress? Yes? Then you must know that forces outside your human comprehension are drawing you into a pit of sin, and the intention is to make you stand on the other side of God's light and purity. We've heard people talk about hearing voices in their head instructing them to hurt or kill others. Those voices keeps going on and on until they eventually give in and do just that. Then suddenly they wonder why they did just that. Ephesians 4, 27 AMP states, And do not give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge or nurturing anger or harboring resentment or cultivating bitterness. The solution is to constantly occupy our minds with kingdom truths in the light of God's word to keep demons and the evil desires away. Say no to those voices. Resist the lies of the adversary. James 4, 7, AMP says, So submit to the authority of God. Resist the devil, stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. Also, Hebrews 12, 13, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Why? If we don't resist the demonic forces, they will compel you to act on your feelings, or even do things that you have never dreamt of in your right mind. Study God's word regularly and let the light of God's word saturate your spirit, soul, and body. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Psalm 119, 130, KJV. Number 3. Sin blinds the eyes and minds of men to its consequences. This is one of the most dangerous aspects of the nature of sin. It is very sneaky as it blindsides its host from seeing the consequences that lay ahead. Of course, if most of us knew the consequences of our actions, we would run from the temptation to sin with speed. Amnon, the son of King David, was blind, not to see that raping his sister would result to his death, else he wouldn't have attempted it. 2 Samuel 13 describes what transpired between he and his sister. In the course of time, Amnon, son of David, fell in love with Tamar, the beautiful sister of Absalom, son of David. Amnon became so obsessed with his sister Tamar that he made himself ill. She was a virgin, and it seemed impossible for him to do anything to her. Now Amnon had an advisor named Jonadab, son of Shema, David's brother. Jonadab was a very shrewd man, he asked Amnon, Why do you, the king's son, look so haggard morning after morning? Won't you tell me? Amnon said to him, I'm in love with Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Go to bed and pretend to be ill, Jonadab said. When your father comes to see you, say to him, I would like my sister Tamar to come and give me something to eat. Let her prepare the food in my sight, so I may watch her and then eat it from her hand. David sent word to Tamar at the palace. Go to the house of your brother Amnon and prepare some food for him. So Tamar went to the house of her brother Amnon, who was lying down. She took some dough, kneaded it, and made the bread in his sight and baked it. Then she took the pan and served him the bread, and he refused to eat. Send everyone out of here, Amnon said. So everyone left him. Then Amnon said to Tamar, Bring the food here into my bedroom, so I may eat from your hand. And Tamar took the bread she had prepared and brought it to her brother Amnon in his bedroom. But when she took it to him to eat, he grabbed her and said, Come to bed with me, my sister. No, my brother, she said to him. Don't force me. Such a thing should not be done in Israel. Don't do this wicked thing. But he refused to listen to her. And since he was stronger than she, he raped her. Then Amnon hated her with intense hatred. In fact, he hated her more than he had loved her. Amnon said to her, Get up and get out. Tamar put ashes on her head and tore the ornate robe she was wearing. She put her hands on her head and went away, weeping aloud as she went. Her brother Absalom said to her, Has that Amnon, your brother, been with you? Be quiet for now, my sister. He is your brother. Don't take this thing to heart. And Tamar lived in her brother Absalom's house, a desolate woman. When King David heard all this, he was furious. And Absalom never said a word to Amnon, neither good or bad. He hated Amnon because he had disgraced his sister Tamar. Two years later, when Absalom's sheep shearers were at Baal Hazor, 
near the border of Ephraim, he invited all the king's sons to come there. Then Absalom said, If not, please let my brother Amnon come with us. The king asked him, Why should he go with you? But Absalom urged him, so he sent with him Amnon and the rest of the king's sons. Absalom ordered his men, Listen, when Amnon is in high spirits from drinking wine, and I say to you, Strike Amnon down, then kill him. Don't be afraid. Haven't I given you this order? Be strong and brave. So Absalom's men did to Ammon what Absalom had ordered. Then all the king's sons got up, mounted their mules, and fled. Sin closed his eyes to everything but the longing in his flesh. He didn't think of the shame on Tamar, the anger of his brother or father, or even the disgust he would feel after sinning. All he could see was the pleasure of the moment the eyes of its victim from seeing the consequences of their actions. This is the same way it blinded Samson until he was captured and humiliated till he died. Judges 16 shows how Samson fell. His lust for women consumed him with pleasure at first, till it eventually consumed him with destruction. The mighty deliverer of God's chosen people was reduced to nothing. This shows that we usually do not see the end game of sin, but if we walk with God's spirit and yield to him, he will show us and steer away from that path. Number 4. Sin looks exciting and satisfying, but it is only for a moment. The devil has perfected the illusion that has made humans feel that sin is acceptable. He carefully sets us up and his plots go into full swing to make us think we are having fun, only to pull the rug off of our feet. One moment you are the center of attention and everyone is celebrating you. The next moment, those same people turn their backs as soon as the consequences of that sinful life shows up. The consequences of sin always outlives the pleasure that the devil deceives the individual with. Jesus speaking in Matthew 16, 26. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, wealth, fame, success, but forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory and majesty of his Father with his angels. Then he will repay each one in accordance with what he has done. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for showing me the nature of sin, so that I can escape from its traps. In Jesus' name I ask that my life will be yielded to your Holy Spirit so that I can walk with you and not live a life that is against you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mari ikut Yesus. Mari ke jalan yang benar. Tuhan berkati.